Hi, everybody out there in uh, virtual land. Um, I'm Dr. Tom Wright, and I am, uh, and today we're going to talk about um, COVID, which, um, and how it, it interplays with lipedema. And today I, um, I am so lucky to be able to uh, share my time with uh, Dr. Karen Herbst. Hi, I'm Karen Herbst. I am an endocrinologist and I specialize in the care of people who have lipedema, Durkheim's disease, and other fat disorders. And Tom and I have been doing these videos uh, at least a couple times now, I think, over time. And it's really great to be on with um, Tom doing this again, especially talking about COVID and how important it is to understand some issues for ladies with lipedema. Great. So now, um, so, um, you know, one, one of the biggest questions uh, that, that uh, I'm, you know, we're getting is do lipedema ladies, uh, are they at increased risk for um, contracting COVID? Uh, Dr. Herbst, can you um, um, answer that? Yeah. So Tom, you and I have talked about this and we've both talked about this uh, with other people and I really do not think that ladies with lipedema are at greater risk for developing COVID-19. And the reason for that is that ladies with lipedema tend to be relatively healthy. They exercise, they eat properly, and the lipedema tissue, because of its location, it really doesn't confer an increased risk in terms of inflammation on the body. The only problem is if a woman with lipedema gains weight, and she develops obesity on the abdomen and the trunk, then she's at risk for metabolic issues, uh, prediabetes, and that is a chronic condition, and that could put her at increased risk for developing COVID-19. Yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's a great, great summary. Um, you know, what, um, and, and, and so, uh, and we are, we are, obesity seems to be, if secondary obesity seems to be a, a real risk factor in this, in, in terms of if you get COVID and, 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 um, and contracting complications. So, um, Karen, what, what uh, are some of the lab or immune abnormalities that are seen with lipedema? So we don't see a lot of immune abnormalities in ladies who have lipedema. The only problem is that it's really hard to test for immune dysfunction and you have to go to specialty labs. And I don't think that in general, testing for uh, immune dysfunction is standard of care right now. We don't, it's not a, a lab that we can get through regular labs, you know, usual labs um, and it's all, if you get it, it's expensive and then it's, it's not FDA approved. So when we do see, look at immune cells in ladies with lipedema, we really don't see um, much different from normal. However, we do know that there are more macrophages in the tissues of ladies with lipedema. And we also know that the fat cells don't produce the same type of hormones from lipedema tissue as, you know, quote unquote, normal fat tissue. So the hormonal milieu is different. And, you know, what, what that really means in terms of risk for, for COVID-19, I, I really can't say. Um, we can look at uh, labs for, um, for immune, for inflammation, such as C-reactive protein, that's, you know, used very commonly. I'm sure a lot of, uh, uh, ladies with lipedema have had C-reactive protein levels checked. Sometimes they can be high, but usually they're low. That They become high when they develop that secondary obesity, as you mentioned, Tom. And then we look at things like ESR, which tells you how heavy your red blood cells are. And the heavier they are, the more um, junk that they have associated with them. And that junk includes uh, acute phase proteins that come from the liver and antibodies. And that um, is also a marker of inflammation. And then we have the CH50, uh, which I check on ladies. It's a marker of complement. Complement is part of the inflammatory pathway, but we really don't know what those high levels mean. And so I don't think that is a good lab to be checking right now to see what your risk for COVID-19 is. And Tom, can I ask you, um, 
you know, when we're talking about, you know, risk for, for COVID-19, um, we mentioned obesity and prediabetes. Can you tell me some of the other high risk categories for development of COVID-19 or what would increase a, a woman's risk for developing COVID-19? Well, sh sure. So other, you know, significant, um, so CDC has put out a list and, and they, they mention, you know, obviously people with cancer, um, uh, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, um, and then age over 65. And then, you know, the, the other kind of caveat, those are the, those are the, are, are what the CDC has, uh, on their website right now, but they, but we are seeing, um, it also is the, you know, the, um, you know, obesity is, is over, we're seeing more and more complications in people that are, 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 are significantly overweight. And so that might, that might be part of the, uh, CDC's, uh, um, list in, in the, in the coming future. And they are updating that every day. And I, I read recently that asthma was not a risk factor. Did you see anything about that? Well, so there, I mean, so what, what, this is just, again, what they're seeing is that they thought it would be a very significant risk factor for respiratory uh, compromise in COVID. And, and they are, I mean, it is true. They are seeing asthmatics ha are, are uh, having that, but, but not as severe or not as significant as they thought. And so, um, yeah. Um, and then, um, you know, one thing, um, you know, Karen, I wanted to, you know, kind of, this is a great opportunity to talk about how lipedema ladies could uh, tune up their immune systems and, um, you know, what sort of things, again, that we uh, would, would you recommend for, uh, our, our lippy ladies now, um, and, uh, you know, to keep them healthy, especially in, in, in this time. So of course the usual, um, eating a healthy diet, rainbow colored fruits and vegetables have bioflavonoids, which are anti-inflammatory. Um, trying to exercise to move uh, fluid out of the legs and to keep muscles healthy and reduce inflammation. Uh, there are a couple vitamins that we could discuss. Um, one of them would be vitamin D. So we know that, that the more fat there is on the body, the lower the vitamin D levels are in the blood. And if vitamin D is taken up by fat, it's really not available to be used by the body. And vitamin D really helps the immune system function. And we know that a lot of ladies who have lipedema have low vitamin D levels. So in order, you know, just an easy way and it's cheap um, is to improve your immune system function is to make sure that your vitamin D levels are up to snuff. And current recommendations are at least 2000 units per day for adults. So that would be and it readily available at, at um, any store online. And because it is fat soluble, you're gonna get it in an oil. So it comes in a, a capsule. And you can get different kind of oils, and I would just check that on the label because you don't want to get soy because it tends to get rancid faster. So I like the vitamin D and coconut oil. Oh, great, great tip! Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I, every time, every time I get to talk to you, I learn something new, um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and so, uh, um, you know. Um, so one of the things um, I wanted to talk about was just, you know, like, and, and I'm hearing this is, is, you know, this COVID is, is, is giving special challenges to our lippy ladies. Um, and, um, and, you know, it's, I mean, first of all, it is a little harder. I mean, a lot of gyms are closed um, and it's harder to, um, you know, get out and exercise. There is some social, some parks are closed and such, but it's still uh, really important. Um, but, but, but one of the challenges also is now, um, you know, manual lymph drainage and, and occupational therapy, uh, manual, um, these sort of things are, are right now, it's, 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 it's hard. Um, and we're having to adjust our practices. Uh, we're doing virtual visits um, and we're doing, um, you know, we're, we're 
instead of sending people to be fitted for compression, we're having them, um, you know, measure themselves at home and, um, and, you know, those, those, um, to get the, and I, again, it's still even, you know, it's still so important to wear your compression. Um, um, and, um, a lot of, um, and, and, and to keep your, you know, that compression wears out. So you need to, um, you know, replace that every, um, six months, uh, six months to the year. And mm -hmm. so, yeah. What, what kind of activities do you think that, um, would you recommend that ladies can do at home? Let's say they don't have exercise equipment. What should they be doing? Well, that's a great question. So, um, I mean, you know, even the vibration plates do, they not only help with lymphatic flow and, um, but they also build muscle. Um, and I, I think that, um, you know, walking, treadmill, elliptical, I, I like elliptical because it's so low impact. And, um, but, uh, you know, I mean, most, if, you know, most people live in a neighborhood, they can just walk around. Walking is, is great. I mean, uh, unfortunately, a lot of community pools um, are not, are, you know, are not opening or not going to be opened. And so yeah. that's going to be a problem. Um, but uh, in water exercises, which are usually a go-to thing for uh, lipedema ladies is, uh, is, you know, is, is a little tough right now. One of the, um, when I went to the ILF meeting last June, oh my goodness, it's been almost a year. Uh, they, um, Dr. Belgrado from Belgium showed with Indocyanin Green that if you do the dead cat, that you move lymph very well. And, and how to do the dead cat is you lie on your back and you put your legs and arms in the air and you shake them. So just shake, 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 shake. And you shake your arms and you shake your legs. So I think doing the dead cat is cheap, easy, quick, and it, a great way to move lymph fluid. Okay, so great, great tip. I mean, this is, this is, um, um, Hope everyone's doing the dead cat. That's, I, I that's another pearl I, I'm going to put in my back pocket. Um, so. <laughs> the other thing, you know, to think about, I did talk about vitamin D, um, but, you know, a lot of ladies with lipedema have hypermobile joints or hypermobile tissue, and that's tissue that's at risk for damage and, you know, nicks and dings. And so the body has to repair it all the time. And vitamin C is a great anti-inflammatory. You've probably read about it online that it, it's been mentioned as something that may help uh, prevent or treat COVID-19. And the reason is because vitamin C helps repair tissues. So taking at least a gram of vitamin C every day would be a really good idea. And the question is, how do you take the vitamin C? So vitamin C doesn't absorb very well. So you either eat a lot of um, fruits and vegetables that have vitamin C, but you can also get lipophilic vitamin C. And it comes in a little packet with, um, it's kind of oil based, it's kind of goopy. And you uh, take a glass that's got some sort of liquid in it, whatever your favorite liquid in it, and you uh, dump it in there and then you swirl around, you, you take it down like you would eat an oyster. And it really doesn't have any taste or flavor. And that um, really helps repair wounds. And I learned that about that lipophilic vitamin C from a, a lady with lipedema who had liposuction surgery. And she took that vitamin C after and she noticed uh, that her healing was really rapid and, and really, she really healed well. So that would be a, a, another way to do it. But you can get vitamin C in all sorts of different ways, like emergency, if you have some of that at home, so you wouldn't have to go out. Lots of people have that. You can get the chewable tablets, just watch out for the sugar. One last question I have uh, um, uh, is, what, what are your thoughts about zinc? Because um, uh, you know we're also hearing that. I mean, it ob obviously also helps uh, skin health and um, skin repair, and it also might have some antiviral um, um, with COVID. Yeah, I was talking about zinc to Linda Ann Kahn from California, and um, she believes that zinc is really, really important for uh, keeping the immune system healthy,
for uh, preventing infections, and zinc acts as a cofactor for lots of different enzymes in the body, including repair enzymes. So again, it's part of that, you're kind of building up walls against the virus, and so vitamin C and zinc both help with that. So I think that would be a good idea too, and you would just follow package instructions. Now, here's my, here's my little tip. Um, uh, pumpkin seeds are a great source of zinc. Um, oh. <laughs> and, and so are all, all, all <laughs> yeah, and, and all of the, all the, you know, all of the squash, you know, are pretty good zinc sources. So, um, just, just, there's my, there's my, uh, little pearl for you. Nice. Thank you, Tom. I really appreciate it. And I hope everyone else, uh, appreciates all the pearls that we've shared today and, um, definitely looking forward to comments from people on this Zoom video. Well, thank you very much for joining, uh, uh, and this has been great. And uh, everybody, uh, you know, please stay safe and healthy. And uh, you know, um, yep. And uh, and and we're we're sending out um, we're sending out our positive thoughts to everybody out out, out there getting through this. Um, yep. There you go. And so, uh, okay. So I'm I'm going to be signing off. Okay. Okay, I'm...